is Rochelle Gore and I'd like to welcome you to the presentation. Today I aim to take you through some of the science and technology behind our SOZO device and in particular bioimpedance spectroscopy. So what is bioimpedance? In simplest terms, bioimpedance is the opposition to the flow of an applied electrical current through biological tissue. But what does this actually mean and how do we measure it? Well, first we use a device that generates an input current that is imperceptible to humans. The current is the flow of electrical charge. And this charge is injected into the body through a first set of drive electrodes and will always follow the path of least resistance. As the current flows, it loses energy and the resulting energy loss across the body caused by the material or tissue is, me is measured by the difference in voltage between a second set of sensing electrodes. So V1 minus V2. Ohm's law shown here relates the voltage to the current and impedance and therefore, therefore measurement of the voltage difference and current flow can be used to determine the resulting bioimpedance. But what does bioimpedance measure? Bioimpedance is able to measure an indication of the fluid in the body. This is because the body is about 60 to 65% water. Water is distributed through cells, through tissue and cells, interstitial and vascular, example blood and lymph, and conducts, conducts an electrical current because it contains dissolved ions such as potassium, sodium and chloride, which are able to move. The human body consists of various components such as fat, bone, muscle, organs, fluids, proteins and minerals. Different types of tissues all have different electrical properties, which is determined by the composition of the material. Electrical current will always flow through the path of least resistance. In the case of biological tissue, fat and bone act as insulators and do not conduct significant current. Fat-free mass and fluids, on the other hand, conduct current via ionic conduction, and the applied current will therefore pass through lean tissue, muscle, and electrolytic fluids, such as blood and lymph. Therefore, the resulting impedance measured will be dominated by the fluid component of the tissue. The fluids comprise extra and intracellular fluid components. By measuring the impedance, we are measuring an indicator of the fluid levels because the current flows primarily through components with the lowest resistivity. If the amount of fluid present increases, the impedance measure decreases. This is a bit confusing as they are inversely correlated, but it happens because there is less opposition to the current flow in the increased fluid. But what is important to understand is that a change in the impedance reflects a change in the fluid levels. So impedance and fluid. Impedance is made up of two components, the resistance R and the reactance X, which can be plotted on a graph. The resistance is plotted on the horizontal axis and the reactance is plotted on the vertical axis. The magnitude of the line is the impedance and the angle from the horizontal axis to the line is the phase angle. The resistance represents the opposition to the current flow through the fluid itself, while the reactance measures the opposition caused by the capacitance of cell membranes and tissue interfaces, and may provide additional information related to this. The impedance of a conductor is dependent on the cross-sectional area, the length and the composition of the material, which can be quantified by the resistivity of the tissue. As the length of the conductor increases, so too does the impedance, as there is more tissue to oppose the current of flow. If the resistivity increases, then the opposition to flow increases, to current flow increases, and the impedance increases. On the other hand, if the cross-sectional area increases, the opposition to flow decreases, as there is more space for the current to flow through, and therefore the impedance decreases. This is summarized in the, equ the equation for impedance. For a simple conductor with a uniform cross-section area such as cylinder, the volume of the conductor is equal to the cross-sectional area multiplied by the length of the conductor. Thus, combining these equations, we can estimate the volume of the cylinder according to the resistivity, length and impedance of the conductor. So how do we take bioimpedance measurements? A tetrapolar measurement uses four electrodes to measure the impedance to minimize errors in due introduced from contact impedance by separa separating the drive and sensing electrodes. Electrodes can be gel-based or plate electrodes and are the interface between the body and the bioimpedance device. To measure the whole body, we drive the current on the hand and foot and sense the voltage or impedance between separate sensing electrodes on the wrist and ankle. You can see that the current flows between the hand and foot in black and the voltage is sensed between the wrist and ankle in green. 
The part at which the green and black overlaps is what is measured, so between the wrist and the ankle. We can measure other parts of the body as well using this approach. If we wanted to measure the arm or leg, for example, we could measure between the wrist and shoulder or ankle and hip. However, this would require subjects to potentially remove clothing and it is difficult to find anatomical markers for reproducibly applying electrodes. The solution to this problem is the use of what is called the equipotential approach. In this approach, we take advantage of the fact that when no current flows through tissue, there is no change in the voltage and therefore we can measure the same impedance using more easily accessible anatomical markers. In the case of the right arm, the current still flows between the hand and foot, but we measure between both wrists. Because no current is flowing between the right shoulder and the left wrist, there will be no difference in voltage between the two points. And we are therefore sensing the voltage at the right shoulder, even though we're measuring at the wrist. Therefore, the impedance of the right arm is what is measured. So in the image, we're measuring the points where the black and green paths overlap. To measure the right leg, the current is injected between the right hand and foot again, but this time the voltage is sensed between the ankles. Given there is no current flow between the right hip and the left ankle, the voltage is the same and we are measuring the impedance of only the right leg, as this is where the green and black lines overlap. In the case of a sozo that has eight plate electrodes, all three of these measurements can be taken simultaneously. But what is the spectroscopy part of bioimpedance spectroscopy? Well, spectroscopy refers to the range of frequencies used to measure the impedance. The impedance is measured using a sinusoidal current that has a frequency. The frequency of the current is the number of cycles per second and is measured in hertz. Traditional bioimpedance devices are single frequency and measure the impedance at 50 kilohertz. They are generally used to determine the total fluid presence. Bion pin spectroscopy, or BIS on the other hand, utilizes the frequency response of tissue to allow the quantification of the different fluid compartments. Because tissue is made up of extra and intracellular fluids separated by cell membranes, the impedance measured at, single, at a single frequency is actually a weighted measure of the extra and intracellular fluid determined by the capacitive profit properties of the cell membranes and tissue interfaces. The cell membrane consists of two layers of fatty acids which act like a capacitor and allow or block current from penetrating the inside of the cell in a frequency dependent manner. Thus when current passes through the body it passes through the intra and extracellular fluid in a ratio that is dependent on the frequency of the applied current. At low frequencies the cell membrane does not allow current to permeate the cells therefore the current flows through the extracellular fluid only and reactance is minimized. As the frequency begins to increase, the capacitive effects of the cell membranes and tissue interfaces increase, and therefore the measured reactance increases also. The capacitive effects reach a peak with a maximum reactance measured, and as frequency continues to increase, the capacitive effects decrease again, and the reactance decreases until at high frequencies, the current penetrates the cell membrane and flows through all tissues completely. R0 is the impedance at zero kilohertz or direct current and the resistance of the extracellular fluid when the current does not pass through the cell membrane because of the low or no frequency. R infinity is the impedance at infinite frequency and this is the resistance of the total body water when the current passes through both the intra and extracellular fluid. In practice, neither of these values can be measured directly. However, by measuring the impedance across a spectrum of frequencies from low to high, such as the 256 frequencies between 3 kHz to 1000 kHz in the case of the SOZO, this impedance response is seen and can be used to model R0 and R infinite. So the effect of the frequency on impedance is best displayed in graphical format by what is known as a Cole plot here on the right. In this plot, the resistance and reactance is plotted for all frequencies and generates a semicircular plot for biological tissue. From this plot, we can determine what the impedance at zero kilohertz and infinite frequency would be by modeling the measured data as a circle and extrapolating to the points at which the circle crosses the horizontal axis at both the high and low frequencies. These are the points for R0, or the extracellular fluid resistance, and R infinity, the total body water resistance. This data model allows a precise determination of these parameters. The behavior of the impedance over this frequency spectrum can also be represented as an electrical circuit as shown. At low frequencies, the capacitor, labeled CM for cell membrane 
capacitance acts as an open circuit, leaving the current to pass through only the branch with the extracellular resistance or RE, uh, which is also known as R naught from the previous slide. At high frequencies, the capacitor acts as a short circuit and the current will pass through both branches containing RE and RI, the resistance of the intracellular fluid, in a ratio which is dependent on the frequency. The impedance measured at high frequencies will therefore be the parallel combination of RE and RI and represent the total body fluid. This allows the determination of the resistances of the distinct fluid components of the body, rather than just the total body water or the weighted measure of ECF or extracellular fluid provided by single frequency bioimpedance. This uses mathematical modeling and mixture equations to generate relationships between these impedances and the corresponding fluid components. In particular, it models different fluid components as different electrical components in order to derive relationships between impedance and volumes. The advantages of BIS are multiple. In particular, the measurement of the impedance at 256 frequencies means that noise at a single frequency will not affect the final results. The use of the coal model is based on the electrical properties of tissue to determine fluid volumes rather than predictive equations as in previous BIA models. The coal model also allows accurate discrimination of the resistance of intra and extracellular fluid components. The measurement of both resistance and reactance also captures additional information related to cell membranes and the ability to take simultaneous measurements of limbs, make BIS technology an asset in a clinical environment. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you and pass you over to Professor Lee Ward, who will continue the presentation by talking about the clinical relevance of BIS. Thanks.